In today's lesson, we're going to talk about energy and its role in life. And the energy that we essentially use is something called ATP. Um, so our question today is, what powers that activity within living organisms, and where does the power come from? Well, the power comes from ATP, uh, also known as adenosine triphosphate. Uh, adenosine triphosphate or ATP is going to power all of the activities that we that we have to perform within each cell. Now where that power comes from, well you guys already know and you've known since you were little children that your energy comes from food. Um, and our food comes from plants ultimately and ultimately from plants it comes from the sun. So we get our energy from all of this delicious food. And there's lots of energy built up within the bonds of the macromolecules inside of all of this food. But this food is like $1,000 bills that we have stored in the, in the bank. All right. All of these starches and all of the, uh, different polysaccharides and disaccharides that we find in these foods that are going to give us energy are like money in the bank. We wouldn't walk around with bunches of thousand dollar bills, um, but we need them in order to break apart into smaller chunks that we can use as walking around money. Now, uh, as we uh, break that down and let me get rid of this thousand dollar bill um, right over here the thousand dollar bills we're going to break up as we go through digestion so as we digest those sugars that we find in that food we're going to break it up break up these polysaccharides and disaccharides into monosaccharides. And these monosaccharides are like $100 bills. And that's money that we were a little bit more comfortable walking around with in our pockets. Now we're going to need to break that money up again, but essentially $100 bills, you might find one or two in people's pockets walking around. Uh, so these, polysaccharides are really good for our cells to store big amounts of energy over long periods of time. But they're not good for us to use. They, they contain too much energy um, and not enough energy in each one of its bonds. And the same is true with like glucose, the different glucoses and the fr different fructoses. Uh, the amount of energy is a little bit better in each bond but uh, there's still too much energy within each molecule to use at one time. So we have to break it down again. And when we break it down again, sorry about that, when we break it down again, we break it into, or we transfer the energy into this molecule of ATP. And what's important about this molecule is these three phosphates on the end. That's what's going to create most of our energy. And in fact, most of the energy, excuse me, that we use is going to be found in this bond that uh, is connecting one phosphate group to another phosphate group. So uh, this bond right here is going to allow us to give just the right amount of energy so that we have a little bit of change. This ATP is like change, that we can go to the vending machine and get whatever we need as a little snack to continue doing our job. Uh, in our cell, the ATP has just the right amount of energy so that our cell can do whatever cellular process it needs to do. All right, so ATP is that perfect energy molecule. And as I said on the first slide, ultimately where we're getting that energy is from the sun. 
all right? The sun shines down on the plants, our primary producers, and our primary producers are going to have little organelles called chloroplasts. And within the chloroplasts, we're going to go through what we call photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, we're taking carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight, and we're producing glucose, a type of sugar. Um, and we can just think of this right now as food. It also produces oxygen, but to the plant, the oxygen is a waste material. We're going to take as animals, as consumers, and plants do this too, but as consumers, we're going to take this food and ingest it, and we're going to digest it, and our cells are going to break it down, and, and in the mitochondria, we are going to take those glucose molecules, basically, and break them down a little bit more so that we get chemical energy out, and that chemical energy is ATP, that perfect energy molecule for doing cellular jobs. We're also going to use oxygen that was a waste product from the plants or our primary producers and use it within this process. And that's why we call the process that we do in my, the mitochondria respiration. Out of it, we're going to give off waste products. Water, water is a waste product to us. We sweat it out and we breathe out carbon dioxide, which is also a waste product. And what's nice is that this becomes a cycle because if you remember water and carbon dioxide are a couple of the the reactants that uh, producers needed in order to take this sunlight and produce our food so the photosynthesis respiration cycle is kind of where we get the ultimate energy all right where all energy starts from and breaking it down into little pieces of change in which we can use. So here's the structure of ATP, and the structure is crucial. Uh, we have an adenine and a ribose, which together make up the adenosine part of the molecule, which is really not going to change. And what I said was important were these three phosphate groups, which in the name we represent with triphosphate. Tri meaning three. Now each of these bonds that holds these phosphates together are going to require more and more energy to hold that phosphate together. So this bond right here has the most energy of these three bonds. And this is the phosphate group that we're essentially going to use to give us our energy. This bond right here has the second most energy. It's, it's second furthest away. Uh, and there are times where we use this, this ADP molecule, or adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two, we might break this phosphate off and use it as an energy molecule as well, but it doesn't have quite as much energy, so it's not as good to use. When we break two phosphates off, we're left with AMP, or adenosine monophosphate, and we have another bond here, but this has much less energy. This has the least amount of energy of our phosphate bonds. This has the least amount of energy. And so we don't really use AMP as an energy molecule. And so in our class, we're going to use ATP as the energy molecule for everything that our body does. So here's the chemical formulas to the breakdown and the building up of ATP. Uh, ATP plus water, when we use water to break this down, we call this a hydraulic hydrolysis reaction and I can't spell today hydrolysis remember lice means to break apart and hydro refers to water so we're using water to break ATP up when we break anything up we call it a catabolic reaction We're breaking something down. We're breaking ATP 
into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and an inorganic phosphate. This P with an I by it is inorganic phosphate. I went off the screen a little bit there. Um, and from this reaction, we are going to get out energy. When we get energy out of reaction, we call that reaction an exothermic reaction. All right, so that's the breakdown of ATP. We use hydrolysis within our catabolic reaction to get an exothermic reaction, which produces energy, ADP, and an inorganic phosphate. Well, now we can take these two products that are kind of waste products, and we can build them up again by adding in energy. And since we're putting energy in, we call this reaction endothermic. Since we're putting energy in, it's endothermic. Since we're building ATP up from our ADP molecule and our inorganic phosphate molecule, we call this an anabolic reaction. So anabolic means to build. Catabolic means to break. And since we're adding on a inorganic phosphate group, we call this phosphorylation. All right, so let's look at why these reactions happen. Why is ATP useful for our cells? Well, ATP is really useful in helping our cells maintain that state of homeostasis, reacting to its environment, building up macromolecules, moving around, all of those things that our cells need to do in order to uh, stay living. Well, what part of transport requires energy? Well, that would be active transport. Remember at the end of second semester, or end of first semester, we talked about active transport in which we needed energy to do. And so we have a sodium potassium pump and we have sodium potassium pumps in a lot, uh, a lot of different parts of our body. But in order to get the sodium through the pump, we need to give one of the phosphates and it's gonna change that protein, that transport protein shape, which allows the, phos or allows the sodium in, out of the cell. Then the potassium will come back in on the other side in order to change the shape back our phosphate is released and now we can use this inorganic phosphate group and this ADP and we can go through a phosphorylation to make ATP again. So active transport it allows our cells to maintain that homeostasis. In order to maintain homeostasis we also have to have movement whether it's moving the proteins that are at the base of this flagella to move this bacterium around or to power and contract our own muscle cells. We're going to use ATP. So muscle movement is going to require ATP. Finally, we use ATP to help us synthesize macromolecules such as proteins. Uh, proteins are going to be uh, put together and we need energy in order to build those things up. And after we build them up, remember that we put them in vesicles coming away from the endoplasmic reticulum and those vesicles are going to move along a network of the cytoskeleton around the cell which also requires energy. So ATP is that perfect energy molecule that allows all of these cellular processes to happen. Uh, it gives it the perfect amount of energy um, for homeos for a cell to stay in homeostasis.